This morning, Malachi gets us ready for the dawning of a new day, a new day that will be welcomed by those who are prepared for it and not by those who aren't. So today in our message, we'll see what uh, we need to prepare for that new day of joy and gladness. A new day dawns every morning. The sun comes up, whether you like it or not, or whether you can see it or not. Some mornings we like it, and some mornings we don't. There's the first day of vacation, and then there's the first day of school. There's Christmas morning, and then there's the morning of your dentist appointment. There's the morning of your wedding day, and the morning of a loved one's funeral. The sun comes up, whether you want it or not. Whether you're ready or not, whether your work for school or the job is done or not, whether you're ready for the exam or not, whether you're ready to preach or not, the sun comes up and the new day dawns. Ready or not, here it comes. So said Malachi, some, he told the people of Israel, the sun of righteousness will arise. Some will want it and some will not. The sun of righteousness will arise. Some will be ready and some will not. For some it will be a day of joy, and for others a day of dread. For the arrogant and the evildoers, the sun of righteousness shall arise and they shall be set ablaze, Malachi says. But for those who fear the name of the Lord, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And they shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, leaping at the joy of a new day. When Jesus comes, it's the dawning of a new day for his people. A few moments ago, we heard Malachi tell us, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Leaping. Maybe for some of us it's been a while since we've tried that. <laughs> the Son of Righteousness has arisen from heaven and come down to be our Savior, to become incarnate, to come in the flesh. Jesus is the Son of Righteousness, who, though swallowed up by the darkness of death, rose from the dead to defeat death. He is the Son of Righteousness, who will arise once more on that last great day, when he will raise all the dead and give to you and all who are in him eternal life in heaven. Malachi is really speaking of all of those sunrises, Living about 400 years before Jesus, of course, he is speaking about when the Son of Man will be born as a human, born as a baby in Bethlehem. He became a man to die, and he died to rise again, and he ascended to return again in power and great glory. He did it all for you. It's really, when you look at it, one big whole work. And he wants all people to be ready and joyful, not to dread that day, but to look forward to it in faith. But the people of Israel were not ready. They should have been. It hadn't been that long since that nation had been defeated by the Babylonians and taken away as prisoners into exile, far from their homeland. The Babylonians leveled the city of Jerusalem, including the temple. After 70 years, when the people returned, they did rebuild the city and the walls and the temple, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't as strong. It wasn't as glorious. A constant reminder of what happens when you turn away from God. Yet turn away they did. Again, things were up and running, but all was not well. The people doubted God's love. They were despising his name. They weren't offering to God sacrifices worthy of him, but were giving him things that they didn't really want. Animals that were blemished or lame or blind. 
They weren't paying their tithes. And maybe worse of all, with all of this going on, they were accusing God of injustice. So God in love sent Malachi to call them to repentance, to turn away from their faithlessness and waywardness, to repent of what they were doing and what they thought of him, and to remember. Malachi said, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commend him at Horeb for all Israel. Remember, or instead of that morning being one of leaping like calves with joy, they will be reduced to weeping piles of stubble set of legs. Remember the law of Moses. What probably comes into your mind? Those Ten Commandments, right? The Ten Commandments received on Mount Sinai to straighten up and fly right and live as God's people. But God gave much more than that to Moses on Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. For as after he gave the Ten Commandments, God also gave Moses the instructions for the tabernacle, the portable temple area, worship area, the place where God would dwell with his people for the forgiveness of their sins. With the tabernacle and the sacrifices, God was continually calling the people to straighten up, raise your heads, and look for the day when their Savior would rise up. Yes, the commandments would show them their sin. The tabernacle would show them salvation. That they wait with eager hearts for that morning when he comes. How about you? Do you have an eager heart for Jesus to come again? For the last day? Are you ready for that day? Challenging. There's so much to do and so little time. We're still bound by time. Our lives are complicated, money and resources are short. Maybe there's even times you doubt God's love because of what's going on in your life or because things in the world seem so unjust. Like the people of Malachi's day, it's easy to give God short shrift, prioritize other things before him, and not be all that eager for the sun to rise on that last day because we're not who we should be. We should know better. The evidence of our need is all around us. But when the Son of Righteousness rises, when Jesus returns, what will he think of me? Well, God does not want you to doubt, to be unprepared for that day, or living in fear of that day. So ever merciful, he promises us a rooster, so to speak, to warn us. Uh, prepare us for the dawn, who will herald the rising of the Son of Righteousness. Then we will not only be ready, but even joyful at his coming. Malachi writes, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Now Malachi calls him Elijah. John the Baptist is the name he uses in the New Testament. He will proclaim repentance. And even more than that, he will point to Jesus and say, Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Behold the Son of Righteousness with healing in his wings, healing for all of us sick with sin, weighed down by life in desperate need of forgiveness and joy. As John proclaims the dawning of salvation for us, even yet today, as he pointed to the Lamb of God at the Jordan, so he reminds us each and every time we gather in his name that we are reminded of the Lamb who washes us clean in the baptismal font. And so too he points to the Lamb who comes to us here at the altar. It is John's words that sound forth as we sing, O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world away. Right before we receive the body and blood of Jesus, the body and blood of Jesus who stretched out his arms on the cross like wings for us to find refuge and where his healing forgiveness is found. 
Yes, that forgiveness proclaimed to us at the beginning of the divine service. His forgiveness washed over us as we remember our baptism. His forgiveness placed in our mouths here in his supper answers that question when the Son of Righteousness rises, when Jesus comes back again, what will he think of me? It will be the same as he thinks of you right now, as he rises up before you now. You are forgiven. You are his own. That day really will be a dawning of a new day for you, a great and awesome day of joy. It's a day that is reflected even in some of our Christmas songs. And we're going to sing it right after the distribution. We'll probably sing the first and last verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, which, yes, reminds us of the dawning of this new day. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. And as he is risen, so are you already now. Each day, a new day in Him. Each day, dying to sin and rising to newness of life. A day to serve others, never growing weary of doing good. After Malachi preached, it was another 400 years until the Son of Righteousness arose and the rooster crowed, named John. How long will it be for you? Until that day comes, you can live in confidence of his forgiveness and in joy, knowing that whenever that day comes, you are ready through faith in Jesus. It will be a morning unlike any other. Just as John leaped for joy when the unborn Jesus came to visit him, so you too will leap for joy when Jesus comes to you, leaping right out of your grave. And you will leap with John in the day that has no end. The, end, the day of heaven, the eternal day, when the sun of righteousness will shine forever and ever. Amen. Amen.